built this house that Judith Myers was going to be here, I'd have probably died. Um, but really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for coming out. Um, this means the world to me always when I'm able to do uh, events like this and have everybody get together, even if it's from a distance. Um, like right now, I think it, it means a lot. Um, a lot of people have been struggling, and, and that's what I'm trying to do here is bring people together and, you know, celebrate something we love and, you know, unity. Um, yeah, and I have a screen now. This is nuts. Um, but without further ado, you guys, Judith has risen from the dead, and she is here at the Myers house. Sandy Johnson. out of state. Raise your hand. That's nuts. You guys better not have it. <laughs> Judith! in this movie? It has been a very long time, 40 some years. And and here, and, and did you expect that there was this audience out here that wanted to meet you, this big of an audience? I had no idea. So I was just busy with my life and finding out that there were people out there that wanted to meet me was like the biggest surprise of my life. <laughs> Get closer to my dancing. Audience. Okay, I need closer. <laughs> <laughs> There's some in the fridge, Dan. Help yourself. All right. Any questions? So just to start off, if you don't mind, okay. I would love to know um, how in the world you got involved with this little movie uh, in 1978. Okay. I had uh, Playboy um, was my agency, and they called me out on an interview for a, a babysitter murder movie. And I was um, interviewed in one of the houses that uh, they were murdered in. That's what they were using for the interviews. I had to scream, which was kind of weird because it was a residential neighborhood. And I thought, wow, well, that's interesting. But it was great. I interviewed and I left. And then a day or two later, the agency called me and said that I had been cast as Judith Myers. So that's pretty much how it happened. And we talked a little bit about this um, the other day, but, you know, I mean, I'm sure you guys would agree. I mean, I put this scene, I mean, the first kill of Michael Myers, I mean, that's, it doesn't really get much more iconic than that, but I put it right up there with the, you know, the shower scene from Psycho. I think it's one of the most important scenes in horror history. Um, but the opening scene of Halloween, thank you, Dan. Um, Do you remember um, how long it took to shoot that one particular scene? It took, well, the actual shooting of it was maybe an hour, so I think we did two takes, but we did a lot of practices because it was a very complicated scene. It started out at the curb, it went, you know, all the way around the back through the house. There, were, there was a lot of equipment, and as you know, it's a small house. So in order to get it right and not have a lot of mistakes show up later, um, it took a while. So we did a lot of practices downstairs, upstairs, for not only for the actors, but all for just for the camera crew and, and you know, getting the, that can of glide upstairs and all of that. So it took a, it took a full day. So it, I, I can't believe I had this moment with you, but you guys, when I moved into this house, you know, I was, I was super excited, you know, I'm building this house, I was 26 years old, I, and the day I moved in, I thought I was going to be very, really excited, because it took a long time to build, and I was pretty terrified trying to sleep here the first night, and my room is Judah's bedroom at the time, and um, so I would just sit there awake at night, like, thinking of all the different ways I'm going to be brutally <laughs> murdered in my sleep, and, um, and I never did any filmmaking, and I made this little short film, just 
trying to get this out of me because it was making me and disturbing me, called Judith, and had the honor of watching it in the living room with, our, with her last night. And we, um, and we kind of replicated the scene a little bit. And it's funny, I was like, how in the world did she get blood on her? Because it was one take, you know, and, and it's nonstop. And I, and I asked her, because uh, the way we did it, Judith was holding some blood in her hand, and when she falls back, she puts it on her. And, and that's how you guys did it, right? Right, I actually had blood pellets in my hand, and so when I smashed them against my chest, they went everywhere. And I don't know what they use now, but at the time what they used definitely stained your skin. So they had to do some pretty rigorous scrubbing between the two takes. So that was interesting. And Jamie uh, Lee Curtis was kind enough to help with that, oh. getting it all cleaned off for the, for the next scene. All right, I want to open up to you guys. Any questions? Yes. As a young actress, uh, how would you have felt if you knew at the time that uh, this scene would be such an iconic scene in the best horror movie ever? Wow. Well, I'll tell you one thing. I would have taken some things. <laughs> I would have had lots of people taking behind-the-scenes photos, and uh, definitely yeah, I, 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 I would have. Seen a no, uh, there are some behind the scenes, but I wasn't in them, and I didn't know that it was going to be any big deal, so I, I didn't take those, and I, I could have, I was wearing um, Nancy Loomis's clothes, actually, and I didn't even know that until recently I'd heard that all of the clothes in Halloween belonged to the actors, and I kept looking at myself going, I don't remember those clothes. Are those my clothes? And when I was um, at one of the cons, Nancy says, you know, the reason why you don't remember the clothes is because they were my clothes. <laughs> so I was actually wearing her clothes. So I might have talked her out of them if I had known that uh, it was going to be a big deal. Anyone else? Yes. yes. So keep in contact with anyone that you work with? I have uh, reconnected with them at the cons, and we've had a lot of fun just being together. They're all such nice people, and they have just welcomed me into their community so nicely. So I really look forward to cons, not only for, to see the fans, but also to see the Halloween cast, because they're awesome. Absolutely. Yes, Craig. Uh, was it Deborah Hill actually murdering you? It was Deborah Hill. We needed some little hands, and they really didn't want a young child to do that deed at the time. So it was Deborah Hill. She had very small hands, and so she was the one that killed me. Deborah, I wish she was still here. Oh boy, don't we? Anyone else? I can't see, it's getting dark. No one else? Um, so I'm trying to think, <clears throat> do you remember anything specific about the house? Any, any stories that you can think of? Did anyone say anything about it? You know, oh, this is a random house that we found. They did, it was an abandoned house at the time. Right. What I remember about the house is that my scene, although it's the first in the movie, it was one of the final scenes shot. And the reason why they did it that way is because the house was abandoned and it was a wreck. I mean, it was falling down. You've seen it in, uh, in the movie, obviously. Well, that's the way it looks starting out. They didn't make it look like that. It was, a, it was a mess. So what they had to do was use it for all the shots where the house is old and dilapidated and then they fixed up the house to make it look new for my scene. So the day of the shooting, they were actually still in the process of fixing up. So they were busy painting and hanging things. And so the, the uh, people in charge of the set were very busy while we were rehearsing. So as they finished up, then we actually went in to the filming. Yeah, there's some, um, I guess, pretty rare photos that I came across uh, that were taken in the 80s. Um, but you can see the house. They literally, they just whitewashed the front. And when Michael walks around the side, they just did the bottom side. You can see where it's like the bottom's paint and the top isn't. So they really did the absolute minimum um, right. to fix it up. Anyone else? Yes. How hands on was John Carpenter for your scene? How what? How hands on was John he, he was, uh, both of them were very hands on. They were both there the whole time kind of giving what they wanted and directing us what you know how where the camera's going to be what kind of um, 
attitudes they wanted us to have. So yes, they were very hands-on. Yeah, back there by the tombstone. <laughs> She died. <laughs> um, they did not use me in the next one. I think my agent's still talking to them. Hopefully the next one, but I'm not sure. But maybe if a lot of fans got a hold of them and said, this needs to happen. <laughs> but, so it's, it's funny. She, she told me that, um, uh, so w w when you were found, it was what, in August, and then almost immediately you had to sign a release because they used the um, scene from the original in the 2018 version. So she just got thrown in and had no idea. You probably never watched a sequel. No, I, um, I, I mean, most of you probably know I was a teacher for special needs kids. I was extremely busy earning a PhD and just doing stuff. And I just never Googled myself or ever I'm, I didn't see any other Halloween except for that one I couldn't have told you how many they were or anything I mean I was just clueless so when I was doing with words with friends and Rick Henrik my agent it wasn't at the time but I mean he like interrupted my words with friends with this random um, text that says are you the Sandy Johnson from Halloween and I'm thinking who is this maniac interrupting my game? <laughs> but I just, I said yes and why? And that's when he, he told me he'd been looking at me for like eight or nine years or something. And he was totally ecstatic. And I, it took me a couple days actually to process it all and, and realize that, that that was a pretty cool thing that was going on. So anyway, yeah, it was, it, I, I, I had no idea. I'd never heard of a horror con. Um, I had left the movies a long time before. That's right. Found you, you went to your first convention, which is the 40th anniversary convention of Halloween in Pasadena, on the red carpet at um, the, the new Halloween. I mean, that's, that's crazy. So uh, I'm so happy you're here, and I couldn't be, you know, I mean, to be able to spend this time with you and have you here is an absolute honor. And on top of that, you are genuinely a, one of the sweetest people I've ever met. And, she is so excited to be here, you guys, and that is, I mean, that's always a great thing, especially 40 years later. So thank you so much for coming out. All right, you guys. Well, I just, I want to just say thank you to Kenny. He is one of the sweetest guys I've ever met. He has a beautiful home and wonderful friends. I've been able to meet some of them. So I just want to thank you all so much. Coming back into the horror community has been amazing for me. It really has. I love you all. I have the best times at cons, and you've added so much to my life. I really mean that. Thank you so much. All right, you guys. Um, without further ado, let's watch this little movie called Halloween. There's about 15 minutes of uh, fun little um, intro stuff, so if anyone wants to get a snack, use the bathroom, there's about 15 minutes before the actual movie starts. And hopefully, it does not rain. Huh?
in a beautiful desert canyon not too far away, a strange and wonderful thing happened. But then strange and wonderful things always happen in Snack Canyon. Boss, it sure is hot. Well, penguins in Snack Canyon? Uh-oh, there goes the car. Ha! Oh dear, what will you do now? I'm thirsty. This is a job for Clark Crow. Here goes. What? Uh, no fear, the power is here. Gather him. Now let's have some refreshments. I'll take an ice cold Coca-Cola. I'd like a tap. Sprite, please. Baby popcorn and candy? There. Is everybody happy? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Way to go, kid. Thanks, Mr. Crow. You really saved our day. Now you join me at the snack bar with your favorite refreshments. video has a special treat for your whole family. <laughs> you can take home any of these great Halloween classics for just $7.99. Or rent two movies and get them for free 99 Now if that's not a reason to scream, what is? Make it a blockbuster fright. The Halloween experts at Magic Matter have everything you'll need this year, including actual character masks from famous motion pictures. And they can show you the proper application of makeup to impress that special someone. Magic Matter's professional hand-painted custom masks start as low as $2.50. This Halloween, remember Magic Matter. Wigs, masks, makeup, costumes, shockingly authentic. Magic Matter, East Wind Mall. Panasonic introduces a new lightweight video system that's so automatic it works by itself. The Panasonic Video Camera focuses by itself, adjusts for changing light by itself, even works in extreme low light all by itself. This Panasonic VHS recorder connects almost by itself and plays back a jitter-free picture in slow motion and stop motion. Put in a pre-recorded movie and this Panasonic gives you hi-fi sound through your stereo. Sound so far superior to ordinary TV, it stands out by itself. Panasonic video system, just slightly ahead of our time. Game Nightmare, the game hosted by a video. The game to win, you must stop it. Roll the dice. The video board game Nightmare, the gatekeeper talks to you. He's turn as it has. And you must answer him. Answer me! Guess my gatekeeper. Go for it! Nightmare, a race against time for three to six very game players. Let's party! It was late one night in the castle of the Chicken McNuggets. What are you making? Sauce. We're using my mummy's recipe. Mummy? Oh, oh. This better be good. It'll be great. Hmm, does your daddy have a recipe? <laughs> now you can get McDonald's Happy Meal Pails for... Halloween! There's a pumpkin pail, Ooh. a witch, Ooh. and a ghost. Ooh. That glows in the dark. You can get a different one each week until... Halloween! 
The evil alien who wants to pollute the whole world. He's gonna smogify every tree in Traumaville. But look who's gonna stop him. It's Toxie, the trendy yet hideously deformed leader of the Toxic Crusaders. How does he do it? He's toxic but tasteful. This dry fighter really comes up the works with his ever faithful mom. They're gross, but they're gonna clean up the world. Toxic Crusaders. Hideously deformed action figures and toxic waste, each sold separately from Flaming.
job uh, in making Halloween was to do an exploitation horror film. And the basic premise was given to me by my distributor, Erwin D. Blondes. He said, uh, let's do a movie about these babysitters who get stalked by a killer. He figured that everybody could identify with babysitting. So many teenagers had done it. And then a little bit later, he came up with the idea of calling it Halloween. Let's set it on Halloween night and call it Halloween. Never been used as a title before. Never been used at all. It was an underutilized holiday, so oh, great. And I was a young director then. I was hungry for experience, hungry for features. I had done uh, some work before then. I said, sure, why not? Well, when we were making the film, I thought, gee, it's Halloween at night and people get dressed up in masks. What better way to have a killer not be identified than be wearing a mask? And we didn't have any money to make a mask. So, so my uh, production designer, Tommy Lee Wallace, went up to a magic shop right here on Hollywood Boulevard and bought a William Shatner Star Trek mask, Captain Kirk mask. Spray painted it, cut the eye holes a little bit different, fixed the hair, and there we go. As I remember it now, maybe it was more, but I had about three or four days to do the score to Halloween, basically record the whole thing. I wanted something deadly simple, and, and something that would just eat at you a little bit. And my father bought me a pair of bongos when I was really young, for Christmas. He taught me how to play five, four time on them. So, all I did was to get on piano and do 5-4 with an octave. And that, that was where it came from. One uh, scene that I'm particularly fond of where after Janie makes her discovery in the house, she backs into a corner. It's a dark corner back there. And she's kind of terrified and hiding for a moment. And then gradually you become aware that he is standing right behind her. And you just slowly turn the light up and it just exposed. Just expose that mask on film. And uh, that was creepy. That, I, that may be my favorite scene. It was an odd experience on Halloween. It was released across the country uh, in October and November of 78 to not very good reviews. Somehow it caught on and began to develop a word of mouth. And I was off directing a TV movie called Elvis, so by the time I'd finished that, I was invited to New York to speak at some deal, and they were screening Halloween, and I was standing outside waiting to go in, and it was just the screams over and over and over again. It was music to my ears. To Western audiences, Mustafa Akkad will always be best recognized for his creation of one of the most successful and enduring movie franchises in Hollywood history, Halloween. At the time of its release, Halloween was the most successful independently produced film ever and would go on to generate seven sequels and countless imitators over a 25-year span. Mustafa, he's like Mr. Halloween. I'm the godfather of the Halloween. I preserve its continuity. I preserve its element. I will keep doing it. And I'll stop at 22. That's what Donald Pleasance said. One of the press were asking him, come on, Donald, you're going to keep doing these Halloweens on this? He said, no way, no way, I'll stop at 22. So I, 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 I like to follow his advice. Mustafa Akkad has kept the franchise alive because he believes in it. I love Michael Myers. To me, everybody hates him, but I am going to keep him alive as long as I can. Mm -hmm.